Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Well, welcome, and I welcome also those who, because of age, vulnerable health condition, or choice, are viewing Mass today via live stream. And we welcome in a very special way three young children who are going to be receiving their first Holy Communion at this Mass. Victoria Nagel, Nolan Wilkinson, and Lucy Melville. So we welcome you and your families on this very special day. My friends, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you came to reconcile us to one another and to the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you heal the wounds of sin and division. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, who intercede for us with your Father, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, whom, taught by the Holy Spirit, we dare to call our Father, bring, we pray, to perfection in our hearts the spirit of adoption as your sons and daughters that we may merit to enter into the inheritance which you have promised. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever.
A reading from the book of Kings. At the mountain of God, Horeb, who raised Elijah, came to a cave where he took shelter. Then the Lord said to him, Go outside and stand on the mountain before the Lord. The Lord will be passing by. And a, a strong and heavy wind was rendering the mountains and crushing rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. After the wind there was an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. After the earthquake there was fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. After the fire there was a tiny whispering sound. When he heard this, Elijah hid his face in his cloak and went and stood at the entrance of the cave. The word of the Lord. Lord, let us see your kindness and grant us your salvation. See your kindness, grant us your salvation. I will hear what the God proclaims. The Lord, for, the pro for he proclaims peace, near indeed in his salvation to those who fear him. Glory dwelling in our land. Lord, let your kindness be grant us and grant us your salvation. Kindness and truth shall meet. Justice and peace shall kiss. Truth shall spring out of the earth and justice shall look down from heaven. Lord, let us see your kindness and grant us your salvation. The Lord himself will give his benefits. Our land shall heal its increase. Justice shall walk before him and prepare the way of his steps. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, I speak the truth in Christ. I do not lie. My conscience joins with the Holy Spirit in bearing me witness that I have great sorrow and constant anguish in my heart. For I could wish that I myself were accursed and cut off from Christ for the sake of my own people, my kindred according to the flesh. They are Israelites, theirs the adoption, the glory, the covenants, the giving of the law, the worship and the promises. These, the patriarchs, and from them, according to the flesh, is the Christ, who is over all, God blessed forever. Amen. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. After he had fed the people, Jesus made the disciples get into a boat and precede him to the other side while he dismissed the crowds. After doing so, he went up on the mountain by himself to pray. When it was evening, he was there alone. Meanwhile, the boat, already a few miles offshore, was being tossed about by the waves, for the wind was against it. During the fourth watch of the night, he came toward them, walking on the sea. When the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified. It is a ghost, they said, and they cried out in fear. At once Jesus spoke to them, Take courage, it is I. Do not be afraid. Peter said to him in reply, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. He said, come. Peter got out of the boat and began to walk on the water toward Jesus. 
But when he saw how strong the wind was, he became frightened, and beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately, Jesus stretched out his hand and caught Peter and said to him, O oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? After they got into the boat, the wind died down. Those who were in the boat did him homage, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Do you ever wonder why there's so much turmoil going on now, not unlike the turbulent sea we hear about in the today's gospel, the pandemic, the civil unrest, the political division, and all of the consequences around the pandemic, certainly the loss of life and the grief surrounding that, the loss of jobs, and we could name so many effects. But one possibility comes from today's gospel that might help shed some light, not truly a definitive answer, but it shed some light on what is God doing in the midst of this? We believe it's not God's direct will that all of this has come about now in the history of our world, but it may well be a consequence of his permissive will. And listen to what we hear in today's gospel that might suggest taking away a little nugget in connection with that. And that has to do with Jesus. After he fed the people, it says, Jesus made the disciples get into a boat. He just didn't suggest it. He made them get into a boat. Now, having been over in the Holy Land and seen signs along the edge of the Sea of Galilee, it's well known, in fact, they have warning signs on the edge of the sea that says, beware of western winds. It's a caution to mariners and anyone going on the Sea of Galilee to understand that winds can come up unexpectedly and you'll want to be prepared for that. So would Jesus be setting his disciples up, making them get in the boat, preceding to the other side, knowing that there's a chance, and perhaps a good chance, that they're going to run into some turbulent water? Could be. Now, was it because he was mean? No. In fact, we hear after having instructed them to get into the boat, precede him, he goes to pray. And when he prays, he doesn't just say a prayer. He's taking an extraordinary amount of time to be in union with his heavenly Father, often before an important decision, important action. And he's seeking that grace, that insight, that wisdom, the direction from his Father as to how to proceed as he goes forth. And then when next we hear, he's walking on the water toward his disciples. We, we see Peter kind of ready. First, we hear the disciples, it's a ghost, and they're kind of freaking out. And then we hear Peter say, if it is you, Lord, let me take a step out and meet you out on the water. If it is you. That wasn't a clear, definitive expression of faith. It was out of some doubt and question as to who this is, if not a ghost. But Jesus accommodates him in what little faith he had. He even points it out. Oh, of little faith, why did you doubt, Peter? But he takes him as he is, doesn't chastise him, come. And so he does, and we know what happens. He then, soon after he steps on the water, begins to sink. 
Then he saves Peter from drowning, brings him back in the boat with the other disciples. And what is he doing? He's helping them to strengthen their faith in the midst of trouble. He says a very important phrase, it is I. It is I. Meaning, in effect, I am God. He echoes what Yahweh revealed to Moses. I am who am. It is I. And Jesus, of course, not only expresses that term of letting them know you're dealing with God here, but he overcame the natural elements. It was understood no one else but God could walk on water. And so it was in the midst of this time of turmoil and trouble and fear and upheaval that Jesus was helping instruct them that they were not alone. Remember what he said to them? Do not be afraid. Take courage. It is I. And those same words can be expressed to you and me in this time of trouble, of uncertainty. The Lord is inviting us to perhaps take some lessons away from what we're experiencing. Peter kind of took it upon himself, yeah, I'm going to go and see who this person is. Is this really Jesus? And of course he fails because he was trying to take control. He was trying to prove himself. And you know, many of us might be in the same position to think that we can kind of take control of what we understand to be something we can't have any control over, whether it be the pandemic or the unrest or the division. We're really dependent upon God. He's in charge and we're not. And that's an important thing for us to keep in mind as we reflect on this scripture. Jesus is truly manifesting himself as God and inviting Peter to get back into the boat with the other disciples and trust that I'm going to take care of things, which we do say he, he does. Now, it may not be in the way in which we expect or the timing of it, but he reassures his disciples, why did you doubt? Do not be afraid. Take courage. It is I. In other words, trust me. Don't put your trust in other things that I'm not involved with. And how often might we, in fact, tend to do that? Take control, trust in systems or answers. Yes, we truly pray God will, in fact, inspire and guide researchers to come up with a vaccine for the coronavirus. And yes, we hope that there'll be peace and calm in society as we see so much turmoil and there's so much we can pray for. But as we present ourselves to the Lord, we say, Lord, help me, help us. The boat is another important symbol. This is a rich gospel, but the boat in the history of the church symbolizes the church. And as we welcome little Victoria, Nolan, and Lucy around the table of the Lord, one of the sacraments of our church, we understand that they are in the boat with us having been baptized, they are part of our family of faith, the community of believers that allows Jesus to be our God, our savior, our guide, our rock, the one whom we place our trust in. And as they are in this boat with us, even in these difficult, turbulent times, they come wanting to unite themselves to Jesus, welcoming him in the sacrament of Holy Eucharist. That's another expression of God's way of saying, I am with you, don't be afraid. 
I want to remind you and in fact become present in you to sustain you with my grace and my power amidst the ups and downs and upheaval, the good and bad times, I am with you always, he says, until the end of the age. And we can't forget that. And we come, in fact, each Sunday to celebrate the abiding presence and power of God, his word of scripture to reassure us, to guide us, to help us understand God's plan, God's plan of eternal life, that there's more than meets the eye than what this world offers, that he comes in his body and blood and Holy Eucharist to fill us with his grace and power. And that's just one of seven moments in the life of our church as members of the Catholic community that are blessed with these close encounters with the divine where God seeks to reassure us that I have not abandoned you, but in fact I am with you in a profound way. Do not be afraid, whether it be in the sacrament of penance, sacrament of the anointing of the sick for those who may be seriously ill or near death, marriage in the sacrament of the uniting of a husband and wife to know God's abiding presence, knowing that there will be turbulent times, and with the grace of God, they can weather those, having the benefit of the sacrament of matrimony. And we can name the other sacraments that, again, in the context of our church, is the boat where we will be safe, where we will know God's presence and comfort and peace. And so we welcome little Victoria, Nolan, and Lucy into the boat as they've been in the boat and now are able to again mark another step in their initiation into our Catholic faith community, the second of the three sacraments of initiation where they will receive Jesus in Eucharist and then later on in a few years receive the sacrament of confirmation, the sacrament where they will receive the fullness of the Holy Spirit. So the takeaway for us is to stay close to Jesus. Don't get out of the boat like Peter. Don't be tempted to go our own way, but to allow Jesus in the context of our faith membership and practice in the church, to allow him to sustain us in these turbulent times and throughout our lives, and to know in the process he will, he will see us through. It won't be an instant, immediate kind of panacea, that isn't the way God works. In fact, we worship a God who died on the cross but rose from the dead. There's a mystery underlying our life's journey that goes beyond our understanding. But because Jesus rose and overcame death itself, we know that he will see us through as well. In whatever way life may throw at us, some difficult, turbulent seas. May God sustain you and me in that grace of trust and hope in Jesus who wants to give us peace. My friends, let us stand and together profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, 
who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In prayer and petition now, we bring our needs before our Heavenly Father, the Lord himself who gives his benefits to us. For Pope Francis, successor to St. Peter, that he may have the courage to faithfully lead the church in the truth of God Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our government leaders, that they may govern wisely in times of crisis. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all impacted by the coronavirus, for the repose of the souls of those who have died, for the health and well-being of those who are ill, for the strength and protection for caregivers and researchers, first responders and military, and for all who are impacted financially. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For divine intervention to stem the spread of the coronavirus. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer for Navy sailors and for all who make their living on the water, that God will protect and preserve them in raging storms. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our parishioners, that during this year of the Eucharist, we may grow in the devotion of the true presence of Jesus in the blessed, blessed sacrament. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are celebrating First Holy Communion, especially at this Mass for Victoria Nagel, Nolan Wilkinson, and Lucy Melville, that they may grow in their love for Jesus and follow him closely throughout their lives. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, that the faithful departed may praise and glorify the Son of God forever in heaven, especially at this Mass for Tom Walsh. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the petitions in our parish prayer box and those on our prayer list, and for the personal needs and intentions we offer in the silence of our heart. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Gracious and merciful God, be pleased to hear and answer these and all our prayers, which we make through Christ our Lord. Amen. Walk by faith and not by sight, no gracious words we hear. Of him who spoke as none are spoke, but we believe him near. We may not touch his hand and side, nor follow where he trod, yet in his promise we rejoice and cry, My Lord and God. Help them, Lord, our unbelief, and may our faith abound to call on you when you are near and seek where you are found. Help them, our Lord, our unbelief, and may our faith abound to call on you when you are near and seek where you are found. That when our life, our faith is done in realms of clearer light, we may behold you as you are in full and endless light. 
Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord set sacrifice at your hands. We praise and glory of his name for our good but all of his holy church. Be pleased, O Lord, to accept the offerings of your church, for in your mercy you have given them to be offered, and by your power you transform them into the mystery of our salvation through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. With Lift up your hearts. And, lift them up to the Lord. and let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Right to give thanks. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in you we live and move and have our being. And even and while in this body, we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so with all the angels we praise you, as in joyful celebration we acclaim, holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. the mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. And remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Sean, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, 
but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Lamb of God, you take Amen. away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. My dear children who are about to receive your first Holy Communion, you are about to receive the most important sacrament of our worshiping community. Reception of Holy Communion is the high point of your initiation into Christ's life and into our Catholic family of faith. And we joyfully welcome you to the table of the Lord to join us in receiving Jesus' body. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Holy Communion will be distributed by a section, and we ask you to just to follow the invitation of your seating ambassador as we proceed. And we'll be first serving those children receiving their first Holy Communion and their families. Please come up wearing your mask and allowing six feet of space between you and the person around you, waiting on the blue circles in the main aisle, and Please wait on the final blue circle until the person in front of you has arrived at the blue square. And as you approach, please hold out your palm open and flat, allowing the host to be placed in your palm. Please do not attempt to take the host. This time, reception of Holy Communion on the tongue is not possible. But with the host in your palm, walk to the blue square, lower your mask with your other hand, and consume the host. Return to your same seat by the side aisle, allowing six feet of space. And we thank you for your cooperation in this process that makes distribution of Holy Communion possible.
Let us pray. May the communion in your sacrament that we have consumed save us, O Lord, and confirm us in the light of your truth through Christ our Lord. Amen. Just a few announcements before we conclude Mass. First of all, please spread the word to family members and friends about the fact that we have resumed all of our regularly scheduled weekend Masses and that it's no longer necessary to re register ahead of time. Some people may also benefit from your explanation about what we're doing to keep people safe while they attend Mass here. All ages are welcome to our outdoor rosary for peace, which will include glow sticks marking the, the different beads of the rosary, this coming Tuesday at 7.30 p.m. on our church lawn. More information is on our website. Have you read the book by Matthew Kelly, The Four Signs of a Dynamic Catholic? Sign up for an online discussion group by visiting our parish website. Even if you haven't read it, you can read a few chapters each week as you participate in an online discussion board from the comfort of your home or the beach or an athletic field. Explore with others the characteristics that are common among those who are dynamically engaged in their faith. And the discussion begins this Wednesday. Again, more information can be found on our website. Next Saturday, August the 15th, is the Solemnity of the Assumption of the Blessed Virgin Mary. And because it falls on a Saturday, it is not a Holy Day of Obligation this year. Still, Mass to celebrate this Solemnity will take place that day at 8.15 a.m. Registration for Faith Formation is available on our parish website, and we hope to wrap up registration by the end of the month. So please spread the word to others you know that if they haven't yet registered, they want to do that soon. And we ask you, please remember to financially support Holy Family Parish. We depend on you to meet our operating expenses. One way to make a regular contribution without having to remember is by making a recurring online donation. Just click the online giving tab on the opening page of our website and you'll be prompted along the way. We thank those parishioners who've been very faithful in supporting our parish and despite the fact that we're under these restrictions, we still operate, we still have a lot going on, and we still have a lot of operating costs that need to be paid for. And we don't get any other funding but from the generosity of parishioners that we depend upon. So we thank you for keeping Holy Family in mind among the other bills that you might have. And please pray for the repose of the soul of Francis Buckley, who died this past week. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And before we dismiss, I want to, in a special way, acknowledge our children who have received their First Communion. Let us give them a warm round of applause of congratulations. And just as a reminder, as we disperse, we do it from the closest to the doors. The last shall be first. So those nearest the doors leave, and then those further in after them, leaving six feet apart. And unfortunately, we can't gather as groups, so we invite you to move right along. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. And have a wonderful week. Be still, my soul.